Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome to What's on Your Mind Hawaii. I'm your host, Tim Apicella. This week, we explore the topic of proposed State Senate Bill 2461. This bill will confront the issue of pet owners who disguise their pets as trained service animals and take them into public places such as restaurants, stores, and onto airplanes. Senate Bill 2461 seeks to clarify the difference between an emotional support pet versus a well-trained service animal, which is considered a tool and not a pet. Things seem to be getting a bit out of hand when it comes to emotional support animals. On February the 1st, 2018, a woman attempted to board her emotional support pet named Vanico on a United Airlines flight from Newark to Los Angeles. Vanico was a full-grown peacock. I didn't have time on today's show to play the video of Vanico perched on top of the luggage carrier as it was being wheeled down and rolled down the hallway to the United Airlines gate. I should note that Vanico's owner had purchased him a ticket to fly, and I assume that was in coach. Bill 2461, if passed, will impose a $100 to $250 fine for the first offense and a $100 to $500 fine for a second offense. Delta and United Airlines, in part thanks to Vanico, have recently stated new policies to address the increasing problem of allowing untrained pets onto planes. People wishing to take their service animals on board are now required to submit paperwork to verify the animal is a real, properly trained service animal 48 hours in advance of the flight. This issue seems to evoke a wide variety of emotions from both pet owner and non-pet owner. Where do you stand? Please feel free to comment on the show or on Think Tech Hawaii YouTube video. In this week's show, we are only able to interview three pet owners. Unfortunately, Vanico declined our interview and our request for an interview. And here are those, here are those interviews. Aloha, this is Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii, and welcome to our show, What's on Your Mind Hawaii? Today I'm here with Evans, and we're going to talk about Senate Bill 2461, the Service Animal Bill. Um, Evans, are you familiar with this proposal that the state legislature is going to try to pass? Yes, I am. I think it's really important to uh, address the issue. It's time. So the specifics of this bill, or one of the main specifics, is uh, for the first offense, if you try to pass your animal off as a service, a legitimate service animal, that there will be a penalty anywhere from $100 to $250. For a second offense, it could be anywhere from $100 to $500. Um, do you think it's time for a bill like this to, to um, be introduced into the Senate and then potentially a law of Hawaii? Sadly, yes. I think that there, you're just not going to get people to cooperate on their own. It's, it's a human nature issue that people, if they can get away with it, they will. And it's just a sad uh, state of affairs if people are willing to pass their animals off as a service animal to save money for their own convenience mm -hmm. and at the expense of people who might really, really need to have that, you know, it makes it more difficult for people who really do need an emotional support animal. So for people that really are using a service animal, not as a pet, but as a tool, um, what do you think goes in their mind when they're at a restaurant or a public place, say a, one of the big box stores or, you know, wherever in, in our community and they see, you know, animals being passed off as service animals when they're clearly not? It, 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 of course, irks me. I mean, I myself am, am uh, disabled. I'm an amputee. I've flown many times and observed people, uh, you know, using wheelchairs at airports to be able to get on the plane earlier. And, you know, it's just breaking a rule and it's a little like people thinking it's okay to tell white lies. It's just that part of our society that makes the, this type of behavior be okay. And it makes it more difficult for the people who really need it. Well, not directly related to Senate Bill 2461, but before this interview, you had mentioned that you were in an airport and that someone who clearly didn't need a wheelchair uh, used the services of a wheelchair just so they could board early. Is that is that correct? Oh, absolutely. I, I uh, 
took care of my elder parents down in Florida for years before they passed. And uh, I, the airport always in Florida had a line of elders uh, in wheelchairs. And one day I was waiting you know, for boarding to begin and I started talking to a woman who was sitting there in a wheelchair and, and it just came up and she said, that she actually didn't need it. She just was using the system because why should she walk through the airport? Why shouldn't she get on the plane earlier if she could? This way she could put her carry on, she could stow it right above her seat because nobody else got there before her. And it, it was, I, I just thought. Well, I guess that's why I bring this one up, this, this issue up, not because it's related to Senate Bill 2461, but I bring it up as, is there an attitude that's starting to you know permeate into our society that people are taking advantage of of laws that are or are not on the books and trying to just you know yeah. just game, i'm not gonna say game the system but kind of gain the system right well uh, again i think it really is part of uh, human nature that if somebody thinks they could get a away with something they do i mean people speed in their cars they agreed not to speed in order to obtain a driver's license, but then they know they could get away with it. And the same thing with texting when you're driving. And people will try to get away with something. And even the best of human beings seem to think that that type of behavior is okay. And it's sad that we now have to police them. And somewhere along the way, it costs more money because you're having to police people. But... Uh, I think we have to make certain rules to prevent people from behaving that way. Do you think it's a good time for Senate Bill 2461 to be to be enacted? Absolutely. I, I think that uh, politicians or experts need to sit down and come up with a solution because if you bring this up to people, they immediately say, well, who's going to prove my dog isn't my my emotional support? Hey, I, I, look, I have the, the collar. I have the, the jacket. I have the paper. You know, my best friend was a licensed therapist and she offered to write us letters uh, to qualify our dogs as service because when we moved to Hawaii, it cost us a a lot of extra money to take two separate flights to we wanted them in cabin with us so on and so forth and we could have taken advantage of it very easily and uh, i just nobody had to tell me whether it was right or wrong i knew what the right thing to do was and i did it and you know it was my responsibility <laughs> but my dogs are not emotional support dogs they're pets so the process of actually getting an animal here to hawaii is pretty extensive and pretty cumbersome so you opted to go the right proper protocol versus getting a script that could have saved you a lot of time and money. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, we had to buy them tickets. We had to buy uh, airline approved carry on, you know, um, you know, pet carriers. Uh, we wanted them in cabin. They'd never flown before. We actually spent time with our vet. Uh, to uh, um, try out some tranquilizers in case we needed them. Uh, we had to stay in a hotel overnight because we knew we needed to land early in order for the Department of Agriculture to process them here in Hawaii once we landed. It probably cost us an extra thousand dollars or so to get our dogs here because we did it the right way. Now it seems to me that in our community here, uh, we're in Hawaii, Kai, and it seems to me in the last five years I'm seeing more and more occurrences of animals in restaurants, certainly at Starbucks, certainly at Costco, um, is what's your impression? Are you starting to see more instance, you know, cases of this? Well, I, I obviously am a, a pet owner and a, a, a manic pet lover, and uh, and I you know, spent time in Europe where it's you know very acceptable to bring a dog into a restaurant and so forth. I respect other people's. Uh, you know, wishes to not have a dog in a restaurant while they're eating. So I would never want to do that. But I don't really have a problem with people bringing in their dogs. You, you just need to be responsible. We had a dog that used to, uh, he just was unpredictable. And so I kept him on a really short leash. And if somebody was approaching, I always said, you, I, you really not need to not approach because I can't promise you how he'll behave. People just need to be responsible. I've noticed that um, the airlines, specifically Delta and recently uh, United, 
have now stated that they're going to put in firm policies about what constitutes a service animal. And number two is if you want to qualify for a, a free seat, that uh, you are going to have to submit the paperwork at least 48 hours in advance. Um, do you think other airlines are going to follow suit? I do. I think that they'll uh, they'll they'll set a precedent. Uh, we were talking before the interview started about the fact that if uh, if a sightless person needs a guide dog, they don't just go buy a dog and and try to train it. You know, the the dogs are raised from puppyhood to uh, you know be able to carry out their duties, and I feel it should be the same way for these uh, emotional support dogs, they, or whatever the animal might be, but. You know, I think it's a way to begin to um, to ratchet things back a little bit by telling people you can't just have your pet certified just because you already have it and it's convenient for you. I think that there should be a, a procedure and a policy in place to make that happen. You know, a, a licensing or absolutely. Well, it seems to me that this bill is going to try to, to, to differentiate the, the definition of a true service animal versus a, an emotional comfort pet or emotional comfort dog or cat. It's not just related to dogs or cat. It's really a, a, a animal is, is the verbiage in the, in the bill. Um, do you think that's going to pit um, owners against owners? And um, this issue may actually cause some conflict between those that love their pets and think they're entitled to bring their pets into a public space because they're not service animals, but they're emotional comfort dogs. Right. Well, uh, I, every time we have any kind of social change in our society, we always see these types of situations, you know, rise up where uh, suddenly people are pitted against one another. I mean, you know, I was kiddingly saying to a friend, oh, I can bring my emotional support llama on the plane. I mean, where do you draw the line? And, I, and I, I'm not a politician and I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. But I, I do think that it needs to be hashed out and, and there should be some guidelines. And not everybody's going to like them. But hopefully uh, we can you know, come up with some sort of, uh, again, guidelines that, that most people can comply with. Well, I believe United Airlines just recently had to contend with someone trying to bring on their emotional support animal, which happened to be a peacock. Um, I have a very, very good friend, and he is well known in the condominium management industry, and he wanted to test out the system. He wanted to see how easy would it be, how easy would it be to get a license for his support animal. Mm -hmm. And so he went online and he paid uh, thirty nine ninety nine, I believe. And he had a questionnaire. It was a multi page questionnaire, and he filled it out. And at the end, he he you know he submitted the uh, the paperwork. Um, online and lo and behold he was approved um, now the name of his animal was donuts you care to guess what that animal might have been with the name of donuts uh, with donuts um, an octopus I got <laughs> you know. no his his approved his approved service animal was a pygmy elephant there you go so he has proven that you know that people are gaming the system. They're getting these vests, they're getting the paperwork, the documentation for $39.99. And um, he did it just as a test to see if it could be done, and, and certainly was. When, when we were researching, you know, everything that we wanted to do, and again, according to what was ethically right, uh, in order to bring our dogs here, we learned that there were certain, depending on the airline, but in general, there were certain approved pet carriers for airlines. And we, uh, once we knew the airlines we were flying, we contacted them and we got the lists from them of which ones they approved. We were actually stopped in Portland by a, a ticketing agent who just wanted us to take one of our dogs out and to make sure that she wasn't too cramped in the carrier we had, she's very hairy. So when she saw that she was all fur, she realized she had enough hair. But I loved that more than, you know, that I could have been stopped because uh, the animal was at risk. 
you know, yeah. uh, being an animal lover, of course, I had so much respect for that. Uh, people just need to stop behaving so entitled. And, Do you think most people who have dogs will support this particular bill, or do you think um, it maybe hits a little too close to home? I think the average person will probably not have a problem with it. It's always those people who, uh, again, feel entitled. Uh, there's such a selfishness in our society that's pervasive. And um, I, I, too, had come up, uh, upon um, a, a website when we were doing our research that would have allowed me to get my dog certified very easily uh you know and they send you the the vests or whatever it is and they send you the document that you need and bump you know it would have i think for us uh, we found it was about 25 dollars per animal <laughs> it, it just doesn't make sense if you had any message for those um politicians and legislators that are working on this particular bill what would it be Again, it would be to uh, hash it out, um, hear all sides of the story, and uh, perhaps try some things out before enacting it as a law. But um, again, I think there are ways to do things. I think that uh, animals that are raised as emotional support animals um, from you know, puppyhood or kittenhood or or, or larva larva hood, uh, <laughs> uh, egg stage. However, you know, uh, should uh, you know that's the way to obtain an animal that uh, can serve that need. If you really do, you know, genuinely have that need to, and you uh, you're agoraphobic, you're scared to fly or you know whatever it be uh, i get it you know i suffered from ptsd after an accident and you know i didn't look to my animals they comforted me a great deal but it was you know. but you've just pinpointed the crux of the argument and that is a well-trained animal whether it be a dog or whatever um, that is used as a tool and it's not a pet, it's truly a service tool. And that is the crux difference between a service animal versus a comfort pet. A hundred percent, you know, we had uh, a dog that I totally trusted with human beings. I, I used to have a retail store, you know, customers would come in with babies and carriages. My dog would jump into the carriage with the uh, uh, puppies and that same dog would attack every other dog out on the street. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that my dog wasn't trained as one thing or another. You just, people need to be responsible and because most people need to be policed to a certain degree and again i think it's part of human nature and it's a, it's a behavior that's pervasive in our society i think that there need to be rules to protect people on both sides of the fence one last question do you think this this issue that you're raising about people's you know the nature of human beings do you think this would have been an issue 20 years ago We might not be talking about a service animal. We might be talking about, uh, you know, texting while driving or, or, you know, cell phones. Cell phones were just becoming, uh, you know, a part of almost everybody's daily life uh, as much as 20 years ago now. And uh, it's the same thing. I mean, I saw one of my neighbors driving down the road the, the other day texting while she was driving. This woman is a professor. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> so humans will be humans and, exactly. and we tend to do things that aren't always above board and we exactly. kind of forget about things. Exactly. I, 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 what does it say about our society? I, I don't know. I know that I can live with myself at night doing the right thing. I, 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 I don't speed. I don't cut people off. I use my turn signals when I'm driving. I, 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 uh, you know, I live with aloha, as we say here in Hawaii. I, I, you know, you just shouldn't have to be policed, but yeah, we do have to be policed because if people can get away with something, they will. Okay, well, Evans, I want to thank you for sharing your opinion and your thoughts and taking the time to um, share them with what's on your mind, Hawaii. 
Welcome. I'm Tim Apichel with What's On Your Mind Hawaii for Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Tim Apichel with Think Tech Hawaii. This is What's On Your Mind Hawaii. I'm here at the Hawaii Kai Dog Park and I'm here speaking with Ernie. And uh, Ernie, I mentioned the uh, proposed Senate bill by Senator, I believe it's Ritterman. Uh, it's called uh, it's 2460, 2461. And the bill basically is proposing penalties for those dog owners or any owner of a pet that tries to pass them off as a service animal, as a true service animal when they're really not a service animal. What do you think about it? What do you think about this? Well, I think that, uh, you know, the service animals are there for a reason. I mean, uh, you know, I can believe that people that are disabled or, you know, even uh, some of the people in the hospital, I've, I've, I've seen uh, animals that uh, have gone to the hospital and then, especially older people, you know, and they've, uh, you know, these people have been, uh, uh, you know, been disabled, or, or even uh, some of them have been, uh, um, you know, mentally, uh, you know, slow. But they see service animals, or they see animals that come in there, and they, you know, they perk up and they, uh, they recognize who they are. But the, but the animals that I really, really respect are the ones that have gone to war in, uh, in Iraq and or you know other wars and have come back and survived. Now those dogs I respect, and uh, you know, if other people come along and say, hey, it's my service dog, I need for this. Or that and I, I don't think that's the right thing to do you know do you think it's a disrespect to people with disabilities that have a legitimate disability that have spent you know their dogs have gone through years of training and they're truly not a pet but they're a tool absolutely I mean you know like you said these pets have been gone has gone through a lot of training and then it's been intense training too because I've taken my two dogs with new puppies and and I, I know what the intense training is just to teach them how to you know obey orders so for them to go through all of this, uh, uh, you know, rehearsals, having to go uh, and 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 learning how to how to uh, protect their owners or whatever, uh, you know, I know it's a, it's a it's a tremendous job, and uh, yeah, I, I I do respect those people that go through the the, the uh, process. Yeah. Well, with this particular uh, Senate bill proposal, um, I think your dog's gonna get caught up in my microphone here. There we go. <laughs> um, He's a big dog. Yeah. Um, with this particular service, uh, Senate bill proposal, it's um, going to propose fines of anywhere from one to five hundred dollars. Do you think that's a low amount, a high amount, or just about the right amount? Yeah, a hundred hundred dollars up to five hundred dollars. I can't imagine what somebody would you know would do with five hundred bucks. If, you know, I don't know what what kind of problem they would have to have that kind of fine. But a hundred dollars, you know, one hundred fifty bucks, two hundred dollars. That's that's about right. About right, you know. Now, I've lived in Hawaii Kai for close to, well, going on nine, ten years now, and I've noticed in the last five years, a lot more people are bringing in their pets into restaurants, certainly Costco, uh, the hardware store here. Um, have you noticed that? And if so, what do you think about it? Well, I haven't really noticed it uh, that much, but uh, um, I, I do respect the uh, retailers for, you know, having to put the signs up and saying, hey, look, you know, we can't have animals that are not trained to be uh, uh, you know, service animals, and uh, for them to, to bring them to the store because uh, you know they cause. And some people, you know, they they're afraid that you know they got germs or stuff like that. I seen this lady just, you know, practically wash her cart because a dog was in there one time at over at the, uh, uh, I think it was uh, Don Quixote one time. But you know, um, and you know they do spread germs. I mean, uh, some people are very homophobic. Let's face it. I mean, that's that's the way it goes. But yeah, I I I think they shouldn't have people walk in there with the dogs. You know. Have you ever been on an airplane when there's been a dog in the aisle uh, claiming as not a service animal, but as a comfort animal? Uh, not really, but I've heard of stories of uh, people, you know, going through that situation. And, uh, yeah, I don't think it's right either. I mean, if animals are going to travel, they're going to travel, the, you know, the way it's supposed to be lawfully, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, going through the process of... Uh, uh, quarantine stuff like that and uh, I'm traveling on an airplane uh, naturally you know you have to put them in a cage you know to keep them from running around or you know uh, you know there's proper way to do things and I don't think uh, having you know an any kind of animals on an airplane is uh, is good do you think this bill has a, a chance of passing the legislature this session I I believe so I, I you know um, I mean I'm a I'm an animal lover I love dogs and cats I get, you know I got four dogs and four cats myself and, uh, you know, I believe what's right is right. And I think the uh, legislature should, uh, you know, uh, prevent things like, uh, I mean, go, go through the process of, you know, making this correct. So, yeah, I agree with that. All right. Well, Ernie, I, I appreciate your time and uh, giving us your opinion. And um, we'll see what happens in the legislature on this particular bill. So 
This is Tim Abicella with What's On Your Mind Hawaii for Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. It's a Hawaii Kai dog park, and I'm here with Melanie. And the topic today is Bill 2460, the, um, the service animal, basically it's the service animal bill. So the question is, um, what do you think about people who get fake licenses and call their, their pet uh, a service animal? and then bring them into restaurants and bring them into food stores and things like that. Um, yeah, that sounds like a terrible idea, I think, for people to do that. Because it seems like it would erode the credibility of the whole program of service dogs. Now, this, uh, this is a Senate bill, and the proposal is uh, penalties anywhere from $1 to $500, um, I believe, up for the first offense. So do you think that's a little stiff, or do you think it should be um, uh, something different? Um, I think 500 might be a little bit much, but maybe 100 or 200, 250, something like that. Yeah, 500 seems a bit steep, especially for a first offense. Now, the airlines are getting involved in this very issue. Uh, United and Delta has recently said to passengers with service animals, quote-unquote service animals, that they need to submit their paperwork 48 hours in advance to, to prove that these are true service animals. Um, what do you think about that? I think if people have a service animal, they already have that paperwork, right? So they could already have it sent to the airlines ahead of time, and it wouldn't be a huge hassle for them to do that. Because I think, I mean, I feel like I've read about instances where um, pets and, and dogs have come onto planes and caused trouble, right? So they need to be, because I know, like, for my own dog, if I would just slapped a service animal uh, harness on it and brought it in somewhere, there could be all kinds of mayhem, because he's not trained for that. And we're always assuming it's a dog. Now, this is a quick story, and I'll get your opinion about it. A very good friend of mine wanted to test the system, and he's uh, very, very well known in the condominium industry. And what he did is he went on one of the websites. He obtained a license. He filled out the, the online paperwork. Uh, didn't require a doctor statement. He filled it out, and I think for $39.99, he was approved and received a certificate that this animal, who the, the name of the animal was named Donuts, uh, was a service animal. Any guess to what kind of animal Donuts was? Uh, canary? A pygmy elephant. <laughs> so, so the point is, it's a mockery. Uh, and he's proving that it's a mockery. Have you, we live in Hawaii, Kai, have you ever seen in the restaurants here or, or in the food stores that animals that look to be service animals probably weren't? No, in fact, I don't actually see that many service animals at all. I feel like I was at Costco maybe two weeks ago, and I did see one there, and it, I had no reason to think it wasn't a service animal. But I actually don't see them around that much. Well, I think that's a good point. They're not necessarily service animals. They're just dogs on leashes in restaurants and, and you know, Costco and yeah. Home Depot and, and everything else. It did have a, a service a animal harness on it, so it was marked as a service animal. So your point is that you've already made is that anyone who's not really having a true service animal, they're kind of disrespecting those, those disabled that really have a service animal and it's been trained as a service animal and it's serving as a tool or a function for that individual. Yeah, right, because I mean, well, I assume, I don't know, actually know that much about the program and I'm surprised to hear you tell about your friend because I would assume that there is a more rigorous program for the animals to go through, that they have to be certified. You have to prove that you've worked with a trainer so that the animals know how to deal with like stressful crowd situations and other things that could come up coming in, going into public places. So if that's not happening, then there seems like there's a different issue that maybe needs to be addressed, which is the, the whole certification process. Just seems to me in the last five years, maybe a little bit longer, more and more dogs are showing up in public places. And I know that animals are people's family. I mean, they are, and I, I have pets and they're like family. But do you think there's a line of when a pet should or should not come into a public space? Well, I think if it's outdoors, I think it's a very different story, right? Um, inside, I think, yeah, most pets should not be allowed inside because it, 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 it just can, yeah, it could cause all kinds of trouble. But I think if you're outdoors at a, at a public park, public spaces, then I don't see a problem with it, as long as they're on a leash, right? Have you ever seen animals on tables at restaurants and things like that? No, I have not. I have. have it's, you? it's not pretty. I guess, I guess we live in a pretty sedate area here in Hawaii, Kai. Yes. Okay, well, if you had anything to say to the legislature this, this go around, what would your comment be about this proposed Senate bill and um, levying fines against fake surface animal um, 
vests or licenses or things like that? I would say anything that can make the program um, stronger and more credible would be good. And it sounds like this bill is going to do that. But but maybe there also needs to be an emphasis on making sure that the animals are, are well trained and not anyone can just get a, a service animal certif uh, certification. All right. Well, Melanie, I want to thank you very much for your opinions and your time. Thanks for joining us on What's On Your Mind Hawaii. I'm Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back. That's our show for this week. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch What's On Your Mind Hawaii. Our next show is March the 27th, and we'll see you then. Aloha.